Hi, welcome back to the Gallifrey and Gunner. In this video we're going to take a look at a fun little 22 plinker whose original version had the manufacturer both sued by H&K and banned by the ATF in the United States. And that rifle is the GSG-16, a 22 that's an MP5-ish. Back in the early 2000s, a company by the name of German Sports Guns, which was primarily an airsoft company, decided to produce a line of 22 caliber versions of iconic firearms. So they did copies of the MP40 submachine gun, the Sturmgewehr 44 assault rifle, AK-47, Model 1911 pistol, etc. In 2007, they introduced a copy of the H&K MP5 family of uh, submachine guns. In 2009, HK sued GSG for what they what is called trade dress. And um, in copyright law, sometimes the look, the mere look of a product, is considered its trademark. And the MP5 is a very distinctive uh, firearm indeed. So the settlement of that was they could actually no longer produce that rifle. At the same time, in the United States, uh, one of the versions of the, um, the GSG-5 that they did, uh, the, their copy of the MP5 SD, which had a very pronounced uh, faux suppressor on it, um, was classified by the ATF as being an actual suppressor, even though it actually had no function in, in suppressing sound in the rifle whatsoever. So the rifle was essentially banned in the United States altogether. In 2019, uh, GSG, after having gone back to the drawing board, so to speak, reintroduced the rifle as the GSG-16, where they basically went through the rifle and made enough cosmetic changes to it that it was no longer considered a direct copy of the MP5 in terms of um, tr uh, trade dress. So, where on the original rifle, for example, um, the pistol grip does not have these finger grooves. It does still have the four business in stock, but for example, the uh, release is on the top instead of the bottom. The um, butt plate itself, there's a bit of a pick rail been added to it. There's a part on the bottom here where you can actually store spare magazines. The iconic um, rear drum sight has been replaced by just a simple peep sight that's wind adjustable. The hooded front sight is now just has protective wings uh, and the front sight post is actually in order to adjust that they just give you different posts of different heights that you just place as required. The um, front handguard they've gone to just a simple M-lock tube with some removable pick rail all around it. The faux suppressor has been classified as being a faux suppressor on this particular rifle. And the top is one continuous line of pick rail. Some things that are same as the other rifle, the controls are ambidextrous and in the same place. The release for the magazine, there's the paddle release and side button. And the cocking handle, which you can still give the infamous HK slap. But on this particular model, unlike the MP5 itself, you can actually take this cocking handle and move it to the other side. So it's a truly ambidextrous rifle. So lefties can do that, that slap just as well as the right handed people. It comes with two 22 round magazines which you know hurt in and out just like an MP5. The 
the rifle itself, when the stock is extended, is uh, 38 and a quarter inches long. When it's put in all the way, it's 26 and a half, which actually is, uh, you know, longer than the minimum requirement for a semi-automatic rifle in Canada. The trigger is made out of steel, where most of the rest of the rifle is just polymer. Um, it's supposedly a single stage trigger, but I can definitely feel that there's two distinct stages in the trigger pull. Um, it's listed as being 5.8 or 5 pound 8 ounce trigger pull, uh, but when I tested it, uh, it was consistently breaking at 5 pounds, which is actually pretty good. The rifle itself is imported into Canada by Blue Line Solutions and they actually did the hard work when originally this uh, was going to be coming into the country um, it was going to be um, actually classified as being prohibited uh, but they did the groundwork and they showed the RCMP that this actually fulfills all the criteria of being a non-restricted rifle in Canada so you can actually take this out uh, planking you know in, in your back fields that sort of thing. Now even though the H and K specifically sort of forced the hand of the company to change this enough so it doesn't look like an MP5. This is actually a very um, customizable rifle. I say um, it will accept a number of airsoft parts for the MP5, um, and there are a number of companies that actually create different accessories. Where, for example. You could put on the classic solid stock. You can get the classic HK front uh, handguards, um, charging tubes, that sort of thing. So you can actually um, recreate this back to looking exactly like an MP5 and 22 caliber. So my overall first impressions of the rifle are pretty positive, uh, despite being pretty much all polymer. It does have a pretty good heft to it. It's about five pounds unloaded, which is about a pound less than a real MP5. The controls are, you know, just where you expect them to be. And it, you know, it'll even let you do that famous HK slap. It's got a good length of pull. It is adjustable. Um, the sights are pretty rudimentary, but let's face it, everybody's just going to be putting a red dot on here. Um, in the next video we're going to be taking it to the range and we're going to be trying out for accuracy and just plain fun. Uh, in the meantime if you'd like to like and subscribe to the channel um, make sure you press that little notification bell you'll get notified when the next video goes up. Also on my channel um, there's videos showing a rifle build that I did earlier, plus some reviews. So until next time, take care.